Fargo Fun. I'm Conrad Fargo. This is the Fargo Five. First, I'm going to start saying this. Hit subscribe. Subscribe. We are here with Julia Schott from the Cultural Diversity Resources. What is it? A center? I feel like I'm missing a word every time I say it. It's Cultural Diversity Resources, but I prefer to be called Julia. Julia. My first name is Spanish. Julia. Okay. Spanish. Really? Okay. Yeah, so my I'm, first language is Spanish. So don't so call you Julia. Call you no, Julia. If you yell at me Julia on the street, I'll probably just keep walking. You won't even turn around nope, and look. Oh, okay. That's my name. Okay. I can But it's kind of confusing for people because my last name is not my maiden name. It's my um, ex-husband's last name. So when they see the two combined, they imagine this German lady. Well, I could go Norwegian with them and just call you <laughs> Julia. Julia you shot. Can, you uh -huh. can do that too. Hey, Julia, would you? That probably would you, listen to that a easier, little more. It than sounds more closer like, than the hard yeah, J the Julia. for Julia. Yeah. All right, Julia. Uh, we have got coming up this weekend. Pangea. Yes. Pangea. Tell us all. Tell us all about that. Um, Pangea is an activity that started in the '90s because they wanted to portray all the different um, cultures that live in this area. And um, since then, we've grown quite a bit. Um, it is every year in November. Um, and it's usually the third Saturday of November. What is your relationship with Pangea? What's the first time you visited Pangea? The first time I visited Pangea, my now 16-year-old was a little baby. Little baby. And so I was right away when you moved it. in. Yes. You were, you were I like... was looking for some sort of connection because... Yeah. Um, when I came here, I was sort of like the only Dominican <laughs> yeah, anywhere. Yeah. The I'm only still, Dominican in the village. I, I'm, I'm sure that's not true, but that's how it felt. So sure. I was looking for connection with people that were coming from different countries so I could feel that I belonged, uh -huh. if that makes any sense. Yeah. And um, I really liked Panchillas. Like I just I put in my calendar and I would go every year. And um, Pangea is basically uh, everybody comes and they set up a table or they set up some sort of activity and they portray their culture to other people. It, they sometimes cook. Um, sometimes the universities have a stance too, talking about cultures that, um, that of their students that have come and stuff like that. And it's so entertaining. There's music, there's food, there's people walking and coming around, and, and it's just so much fun. And we've had up to 1,200 people walk through the doors. It's going to be at the Hjemkost Center, and that's yes. not the Hjemkost, but it's the Hjemkost. <laughs> yeah. We're not pronouncing J's today. Um, the Hjemkost Center. <laughs> Actually, um, Has it always been there? Um, I don't think so. I am not sure when it started, but we have a relationship with the Historical Society, and they took it over, and they do a really good job of setting that up. I'll now, that. I don't know if you know this or if I told you, um, my organization, Fargo Meets Japan, yes. is actually going to be performing there. So we'll have the Soran Bushi Dance Club is going to be there from 11.50. So we'll be up on stage doing a, a Japanese Soran dance, and that'll be... We're really excited and for that. It will be my pleasure to help you with that because that is my job in Pangea. I will coordinate everybody and make sure everybody is what they are supposed to be. Now, it's a, it's a 30-minute performance I have to be up on the stage for? Yeah. What happens if I am uh, go a little quick and I'm just like done at 24 minutes? I Do would I suggest working on a longer On a routine? contingency? Well, no. So <laughs> the, the, it's timed out to 30 minutes, but... Yes. Um, how do, how do I put this? I've done some practice runs, and it's come to 35 minutes and come to 25 minutes. And so I'm just wondering, like, if I get to 25 minutes and I got nothing, okay. you guys are going to just move on to the next yes. one? Or are you um, going to, like, come out and hit me with sticks? Or what happens exactly? <laughs> Not really. You have to remember there's a point when you come in that you're, you're setting up or you're um, getting ready for it. Oh. And that takes about one, two, three minutes. Set up is, wait, set up is part well, of that 30 minutes you get? Um, and then you do your show, and you probably stay there when people are clapping, and then you come down, and there's your five minutes. So, you, I okay, yeah, think yeah. you have to. We don't have to do any kind of. We're, so our yeah. and I didn't even. So our plan is to kind of engage the audience and get yes. them to do the dance with us. Oh man, that's gonna is be that, so much fun. Okay, is that is that okay? Yes, that is okay. I I kind of we're all set up it. for that. So if it wasn't yeah. okay, we were gonna have a. 
No, no, no. <laughs> like the whole idea of Pangea is for people to feel comfortable to ask questions and learn about these cultures. Yeah. And you cannot learn about a culture just observing it. You yeah. have to participate. Participate. Yeah. And um, we always talk about diversity and inclusion, but what does inclusion look like? It's participating, putting yourself in somebody else's shoes and learning about what makes them tick, what's different, what's the same. And we have a lot of similarities, like everywhere in the world, people made some sort of beer or alcohol, I don't know why. And everywhere in the world, somebody made some sort of bread. Uh -huh. But there are things that are distinctly from a certain culture that it's not on mine. Yeah. And when I learn from your culture, I expand, expand my horizons and become a better person. Because now I can understand why you did what you did instead of using my internal bias to say, oh, no, this person doesn't like me because they did this, this and that. I can understand where they're coming from and I can put myself in their shoes easier than if I don't know anything about their culture. And that's why I wanted to live in Fargo with my children and we moved to Fargo in 2006 because I wanted them to see true diversity of thought, race, countries, you name it. Fargo you normally isn't a place people think of diversity, but I, you know, we are kind of the we big are, city in a very yeah. rural place. Like we are, so North Dakota is very, you know, one way, old fashioned, heterogeneous is, on a whole. We don't have a lot like of that. minorities or, you know, any kind of cultural whatever. But Fargo itself as like a, a hub very diverse, is yeah. very diverse. And there's like, there is a very wide range of different people from different cultures different yeah. thoughts and it's uh it's a very interesting city i i love fargo i am vice president for casa which is a nonprofit that we started in the summer because we decided that latin people didn't have a place where they could come and meet each other yeah and we've oh, wow. we've had um three different activities done since the summer and every time we get together, there's at least seven or eight countries represented. And that's just Latin people. And they all live here. They all um, are part of our community. You never know because you can't tell where a person is from by, by looking, looking at their at face. Yeah. Because, you know, people look a certain way when they're from a certain area of the world. Sure. But it's hard to tell with how mixed we've yep. become. Yeah where you really are from yes which plays into the whole joke that i like people say oh you don't look dominican and i said why well, do i look, need to look like a plantain <laughs> it's just it's hard to tell where a person's coming from yeah. until you talk to them that's true so you might see a whole bunch of people walking around they all look german to you and you start talking to them and one is from scandinavia the other one is from ireland the other one you know, and, and everybody brings all these little tidbits of culture into the American culture and adapt it. So it's it's even a culture within a culture. It's just so interesting. I just love people. Yeah, they know? say it's not the melting pot. It's the salad bowl. It, yes. The American I like salad, the salad bowl. And I, but I love that. Yeah. Yep. I, I like it when it mixes. I like it when it stays separate. I just, yep. culture is neat. It's, it's neat to have all the different flavors and varieties, and all of it's very cool. We are moving on to Spoon with their song, I Turn My Camera On. Uh, when we come back, we will have frequently asked questions, so don't go Away. nowhere. <laughs>